Hello and welcome, I'm your code monkey, and in this video we're going to create a graph in Unity. Let's get started. So, we're going to create a graph in our UI. Let's first set up the visual for our graph window. I'm going to go into my UI, my UI canvas, and create a new empty game object. Name it window graph. Inside, let's create an empty game object and name it background, and add the image component and put it in black. We're going to have another game object for our graph container and all of our graph dots will be children of this particular transform and inside we're also going to have another background. Okay, so let's set up the sizes. So for my graph container background, I'm going to expand it completely to occupy the whole thing. For my graph container, I'm going to anchor it on the lower left side. And for my background, I'm going to occupy the entire size of my window graph. And my window graph size, that's what I'm going to modify. Okay, so visually we have our window in here. I've got my window graph game object, which has a certain width and height, the background occupying the entire space, the graph container, which is anchored to the lower left side, and inside it has a background that is also occupying all the size of the graph container. Okay, so inside our graph container is where we're going to place all of our dots. So let's make a new C sharp script and name it window graph. So go new C sharp script window graph. Okay, so in my code here, first let's grab a reference to my graph container. So I'm going to get a private rec transform for my graph container. And I'm going to grab it on my private void awake. Grab the graph container equals transform.find of the graph container dot get component type rec transform. I am also going to add a private sprite for my circle sprite, which is what we're going to use to display each dot on our graph. I'm going to make it a serialized field so I can set it in the editor. So let's make a function to create a circle for each dot. So go and make a private void create circle and it's going to receive a vector2 for my anchored position. So in here, let's create our circle and go into game object, create a new game object, name it circle and add the type for a image. The image is in using unity engine dot UI. Go into my game object dot transform dot set parent. The parent will be the graph container and don't keep the wrong position. Go into my game object dot get component of type image and set the sprite to my circle sprite. Then let me grab a reference to the rect transform, which is the game object dot get component type rect transform. Let's set the anchored position to the one received in the function and set the rect transform dot size delta to let's say 11 by 11 and let's anchor it to the lower left corner. So rect transform dot anchor min equals new vector two. Since we want on the lower left corner, the min is gonna be on zero, zero, and the max will also be on zero, zero. Keep everything on the lower left corner. Okay, so we can now create a circle. Let's create one just for testing, and we're going to place it on, let's say, 200, 200. Back into my scene here and drag the window graph into my window graph game object and add the circle as my sprite. So let's test. And there you go, as you can see, the circle has spawned in there. Okay, great, so we can now spawn a circle and this is what we're going to use to display every value on our graph. So back into my code here, we're going to have a function and make a private void and call it show graph and this will receive a list of ints and call it value list. This is going to receive a list of all the values that we want to graph. So inside it, I'm going to cycle through the list. And now in here, we need to calculate the positions on the X and Y axis for each value on our list. For the X axis, which in this case, let's say it represents time. So something like each hour or day in your game, we're simply going to increase it based on the list index. So for my float x position, let's say it is the i and multiplied by, let's say, a x size. Go up here and define x size, let's say 50f. This is the size distance between each point on the x axis. 
Now for the y-axis, which in this case, let's say it represents money earned in the time frame. So let's first decide upon a maximum for our graph, maximum for our values. So let's make a y maximum and let's just say it is 100f. So on the values that we receive in here, the highest will be 100. That will define the top of our graph. We also need to grab the height of our graph. So let's go and make a graph height, which will actually be the graph container dot size delta dot y. So the y position for each value in here, my float y position, will be based on this value that we're cycling. So value list of i, it will be that divided by the maximum that I have set, the y maximum, which will essentially give me a normalized value within my value list. And I'm going to multiply that by my graph height. So if the value that I'm cycling in here is exactly y maximum, if I do receive 100, then it will be located exactly at the graph height. If I receive a zero in here, then it will be on zero. So let us go into our awake here and create a value list. So I'm going to create a list of int, call it value list, and let's give it some values. Okay, I have my value list here. Let's remove our default circle and use show graph with this value list. And down here, when we show the graph, obviously we need to create our circle on a new vector two with the X position and the Y position. Okay, so let's go into our scene and we should now see a graph using these values. So essentially it goes up a bit, then goes down a bit, then goes up again. Let's see if that appears correctly. And there you go, here we have our values, our first value, second value, the first one, which as you can see here is a five and then you got a 98. So you can see that the five is very near the bottom of our graph and the 98 is very near the top of our graph. All right, so it seems the values are being correctly displayed. Let us shift the first value a bit to the right so it doesn't hug the left side, but everything else looks correct. So go in here and on my, let's just make it X size plus I times X. Size. Okay, yep, there it is. All right, so now that we have our dots, let's create some lines to link up all of our dots. So back into our code and let's make another function and say it's a private void and name it create.connection. In here, I'm going to receive a vector two for my dot position A and a vector two for my dot position B. Essentially, I want to create a rectangle that will go from dot A to dot B. So let us create a game object equals new game object, name it dot connection, give it an image type game object dot transform dot set parent to my graph container. Let me grab a reference to my rect transform equals game object dot get component rect transform. Let's set up the anchor to the lower left side. So rect transform dot anchor min equals new vector two on zero zero. Same thing for the anchor max. Let's set up a size delta of let's say 100f and 3f, so essentially a horizontal bar. And for now, let's position it, anchored position at the dot position A. Just for testing, this is good for now. So obviously on our show graph here, we need to call this function. And in order to do that, we need the position of the first dot and the second dot. Now, when we're going through our cycle here, we only have one dot. So First of all, let's modify this function to actually return the game object that we have created. Return our game object. And now in here, let's make game object, circle game object, which is the game object that we have created. Now we need to store a reference to the previous game object. So let's make a game object plus circle game object. And it's going to start off as null. And in here, we're going to set it to our circle game object. But before we do that, if last game object, if it is different than null, that means this is not the very first dot. So we can connect the last one to this one. So it's in here that we're going to create a dot connection between dot A, which let's say it's the last one, dot get component, rect transform, grab the anchored position, and this circle game object, get component, 
rect transform dot. Okay, so we are going through the list, creating a circle on this position. And then we check if we have a game object that was created previously. So if we're not on the index zero, if we are, then this will be null and it won't do anything. But every other index will have a previous game object. So it will connect this one with the last circle game object right here. And when we create our dot connection, we are creating a new game object. We are setting the parent, grabbing the transform, putting the anchor on the lower left side, setting the size delta to be a basic horizontal bar and setting the anchored position on dot position A. So let's go back into our scene and we should see a rectangle bar on top of every single dot. Yep, there you go. Okay, so we are correctly connecting all of the dots. As you can see, the only one that doesn't have is the very last one because it is connecting with the previous one. So now that the connections are being correctly spawned, we need to apply the rotation and place them in the correct position. So essentially this bar will be rotated in the direction of this point and it will be placed on the middle point. Okay, so back in my code here, let me first go into my game object and get the component for my image and set the color to a new color, set it in white, but with half transparency. So it looks a bit different from our dots. Now let us grab the vector two for our direction between position A and B. So I'm going to grab the dot position B minus dot position A and normalize the whole thing. I'm going to need a float for my distance, which will be a vector two dot distance between my dot position A and dot position B. So in order to rotate, I'm going to go into rect transform dot local Euler angles and the X and Y is zero. And the Z is the rotation that we want to apply. So in this case, I'm going to use the CodeMonkey utilities, which is always you can grab for free from unitycodemonkey.com. So using CodeMonkey.utils, I'm going to go into the utils class and I have a function there, which is get angle from vector float. So essentially it takes this vector and converts it into an angle going between zero and 360. So the only thing missing is our position. Right now it's a dot position A, but we really want to put it on dot position A plus the direction towards our dot position B, but we only want half. So plus direction times the distance times 0.5. So we place this exactly in the middle between A and B. Okay, so this should now be working. We set the color to be slightly transparent. We calculate the direction between A and B. We also calculate the distance between A and B. We positioned our rect transform in the midpoint between A and B. So it's A plus direction towards B plus half the distance. And we rotated it towards our direction. Now the only thing missing is the size delta in here, which will be our distance. So let's see how our graph is looking. And there you have it. A very simple graph that you can use to display information in your game like profit per hour or number of guests per day. You just grab a list of all your values and display them in a window. In the next video, we're going to add some visual separators on our X and Y axes. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Okay, see you next time.